Hello everyone, I hope you all are fine and doing well. Today I am going to discuss about PRPs which is component of FSSE 22000. Although I have described its intro in my previous videos but as a reminder I am going to describe it again. And if you want to, want to see my previous videos on FSSE 22000 intro and other clauses please uh, go back to my channel and see those videos. So let's start. What is PRP? PRP is other basic activities or the requirement that we need to fulfill throughout the chain to maintain food safety. So this is the standard that I'm talking about. So PRP is divided into three clauses as I described before, non-auditable clauses which are first three clauses and auditable clauses. And in auditable clauses I have described about clause number four, five. In my previous videos if you want to see the details please go back to the channel and see the PRP number four and five. In this video, I am going to share about PRP number 6 which is Utilities, Air, Water and Energy. So let's go in the details. So the PRP number 6 is subdivided into 6 further categories which is water general requirements, water supply, boiler, chemicals, air quality and ventilation, compressed air and other gases and last is lighting. So in the general requirements, uh, I am not going to describe here because it's a summary of all other five clauses. If you are complying with all other five clauses, then you are automatically complying with the 6.1 requirement, which is general requirement. So let's go to the uh, clause number 6. Point, sub clause number 6.2, which is water supply. Instead, to read all this paragraph, I have I have made some bullet points that will be that will make easier to understand this clause. So for this, what you need to do, you need to have testing of the water. So what are the parameters that you need to consider while testing of the water from the, ex from the external laboratories are physical parameters which are color, turbidity, taste and odor, chemical parameters which are pH, BOD, DO, COD, magnesium, calcium, chlorine, nitrate and sulfate and third is microbiological parameter which is minimum E. coli, coliform and salmonella must be included in the testing and other specific bacteria which is required according to your product. And remember, if you are doing water testing in with in in-house lab, still it is required to have minimum once testing from the third-party lab in a year. So, what are the types of water that needs testing? First, water used for cleaning of the area or equipment where product is being handled. Then, second is water used for cooling, like ice. So, you need to have testing reports for the ice as well. And third, if you are using water as an ingredient in your recipe like in baking process or juice maybe. Sometimes we treat the water by using different methods like chlorination. So in, in such methods, you need to monitor the chlorine. So what you need to do, I have described in this template. If you know all this reading, you are complying with the requirements. So it should include date, time, chlorine dosage that is given and then chlorine level after the chlorination and then monitored by it. Please must include the header in your uh, format to make it control document according to your control procedure which include document number, version number and effective date and on the left hand side you need to mention the company logo you can mention the logo on the right on the left as you want and then the heading in between so this is for the chlorination sometimes we use other uh, water treatment method like you uh, using UV rods so in this case you need to note the reading of UV rods you need to note the reading of UV rods like number of UV rod, then reading, then date when you're monitoring it, then time and monitored by. Please include the document header in this document as well to make it control as we are doing in the chlorination document. So if you are not using the, these methods in your premises, you do not need to have this document, but you are using then you need to have these documents as well. So on top of the previous requirements you need to keep in mind and need to implement that portable and non-portable water should be separated in the facilities. Then use pipeline that you can disinfect as per set frequency to ensure safety of the product. Then you need to make sure the availability of hot and cold water as per the requirement in the facility to perform different tasks like washing and cleaning of the area equipments and sometimes also the hand washing. So this is all about the 6.2 if you are implementing all these requirements then you are complying with this requirements. So let's go to the clause number 6.3. Now the clause number 6.3 which is boiler chemicals. So in case of boiler chemicals if you are using those in your facility then it should be food additives, approved food additives. So what, what is meant by food additives? The common word that you are using that food grade chemicals. 
so you need to use food grade chemicals and for this what you need to do food grade chemicals and for this what you need to do you must have food grade certificate of that chemical the second is material safety data sheet of that chemical and third is uh, technical data sheet if you have all these three document for that chemical then you are qualifying this requirement then second is so the chemical should be in lock and key and only specific person should have access to these chemicals so this is all about clause number 6.3 now let's go to the clause number sub clause number 6.4 so clause number 6.4 is about air quality and ventilation so i'm not going to again read this all text rather i have made some bullet points if you complying if you follow those points then you're automatically complying with this requirement the first point is environment pathogen monitoring so minimum once a year testing of environment by third party third party lab is required second is air filtration filters should be changed as per set frequency and this frequency should be defined in your sop and the frequency should be followed and third is cleaning of air ducts it should be included in your cleaning schedule and you have to clean as per your requirement of your area and you need to include it in your cleaning schedule and define the procedure how will you clean the air ducts then fourth is humidity meter humidity meter in should be monitored in the area and for this you need to place a humidity meter monitoring should be available then and the last is positive air pressure creation of positive air pressure in the area is required for some ports like in dairy industry or beverage industry so you have to make sure if you are qualifying all these requirements you are qualifying the 6.4 clause now let's go to the clause number 6.5 which is compressed air and other gases to comply with this requirements you have to follow the points the first is uh, food grade certificate of the oil uh, or the lubricant that you are using in this compressor should be available second is humidity should be defined in the procedure and should be followed and third point is microbiological testing of air and the lab test report should be available then fourth point is air filters the air filters that you are using in your compressor uh, its specification should be defined and its frequency should be defined and you have to use those and have you have to change the filters after set frequency to avoid any contamination so these are the six points that you need to follow to comply with this sub clause 6.5 now the last clause is sub clause is lighting and for this what you need to do use covered light in the premises and shutterproof glass in the in your premises and then what you need to do you have to make an inspection sheet of all the brittle material and the glasses in your premises you need to have inspection report after set frequency and in case there is any damage observed you need to uh, you need to make a corrective action against that you can use this format you can use this format from your for your company as well so we have finished all sub clauses uh, related to clause number 6 so let's discuss most important point of this clause which is documents and records required for this clause so first is prp related procedure should be available and the specification of the utilities second is pathogen monitoring record should be available an example is lab test reports product inspection record food grade certificate of chemicals and lubricants records on cleaning and sanitizing then preventive maintenance records product spoilage or disposal records rework records inspection of glass records uv rod records awareness or training records specifically specifically for this clause then complaints customer complaints and internal audit fsms audits and gmp so all together you can also call it as fsc when 2000 internal audit if you have all these documents available then you need to be worry free during the audit because you have everything to comply with this clause thank you so much this is all about clause number 6 please share your comments and feedback in the comment section and don't forget to hit like and subscribe my channel